In this video, we will be taking a deep dive into the Vogelkot crystal. Who discovered this amazing crystal? The characteristics that make up a Vogel crystal? The science behind it? The characteristics of quartz? How to program and use a Vogel crystal? How these crystals can be a powerful addition to energy grids, tuning forks, and cutting edge technologies, and so much more. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey. People have been attracted to crystals throughout history. What makes these minerals so desirable? Is it just their beauty, or is there something more to it? We'll be exploring this and a whole lot more in this documentary. First, we will explore who created the Vogel cut crystal and the background of this remarkable man. Marcel Vogel downloaded and received the information for the Vogel cut crystal. The Vogel cut crystal can be described as a precision cut instrument that coheres and amplifies thought energies. Marcel was one of the primo top scientists in all of IBM's history. He was quite a remarkable man and an expert in liquid crystals, magnetics, and luminescence. He was a prolific inventor with his name on over a hundred patents. He started off in the field of luminescence and built a company around that, which he later sold before working for IBM. He worked for IBM for 27 years as one of their most top research scientists on pioneering innovations in magnetics, optic electrical devices, and liquid crystal systems. After Marcel left IBM, he formed a nonprofit called Psychic Research Incorporated. This was a result of Marcel moving from a rational scientist to a spiritual scientist, as he put it. While at IBM, he had come across two articles that ended up capturing his attention, although not after initially first dismissing the idea. One of the articles was by Cleve Baxter, Do Plants Have Emotions? And another article in Popular Electronics, which had a wiring diagram for a device that measured the electrical reactions of plants. It was through Marcel's extensive experiments with plants that would ultimately lead him to the understanding necessary to clear, program, and effectively use crystals for remarkable energy work. Marcel's experiments mirrored the results of Cleve Baxter's, in which he found that plants, when hooked up to a device like a lie detector or polygraph machine, would react or send out a signal when a leaf was torn, burned, or the plant was uprooted. More amazingly, however, was that Marcel found that the plant would react to just the thought of having something done to it. In other words, the plant had the ability to feel and read the thoughts and intent of the experimenter. If the experimenter pretended that he was going to tear a leaf, the plant would not react as it knew that the experimenter was bluffing. Why is this relevant or important to Vogel crystals? Well, Marcel found with his extensive work with plants that intent was everything and the addressing mechanism used was of paramount importance for being able to program crystals and to magnify their power. Marcel's extensive work with a device called a Wheatstone Bridge, a type of measuring device that measures resistance, ultimately revealed to him what would become the most effective way to clear and program a crystal. The Wheatstone Bridge showed Marcel that when a breath was slowly released in a natural way, the instrumentation recorded little activity. But when the breath was held and then released in a sudden burst, in a pulsed release from one's nostrils, the recording charge was consolidated and took on a laser-like quality and the recording activity would be nearly off the charts. Additionally, he learned that the distance he was away from the plant did not affect the readings. This would later lead to his understanding of the effectiveness of remote healing and energy work and how the inverse square law and distance did not apply. Intent, done with a strong outward nostril breath, was ultimately the most effective method which plants reacted to the most. He took that information and then later applied it to the method he developed for clearing and programming a Vogelcut crystal. 
Also with his plant experiments, Marcel discovered some other crucial findings when it came to remote work. Marcel did experiments that demonstrated that he could make a plant register on the recording device up to 8,000 miles away. In the experiment, he took two plants and plucked a leaf from one of the plants and found that the second plant would respond to the injury of the first plant, but, here is the but, only if he was paying attention to the plant. He concluded that it was his own mental responses that were being recorded through the plants. In other words, the plants were effectively mirroring Marcel's own consciousness. This work convinced Marcel that the experiments were revealing a method of storing both subtle and psychic energy. He felt that the plants were acting like batteries for his own thoughts and intentions. Marcel said, there is energy connected with thought. When one pulses one's thought, that energy becomes coherent and that coherence of thought has the power of a laser." End quote. If you have interest in this topic, I highly recommend The Secret Life of Plants by Peter Tompkins and Christopher Bird, which has a detailed overview of Marcel's work within the book, or the out-of-print Primary Perception by Cleve Baxter is a very eye-opening read as well. Although due to it being expensive and hard to find, I would suggest finding it at the library. I will have links to these books in the comment section of the video. When one inhales and the diaphragm and muscles between your ribs contract, a negative pressure or charge is drawn into the body. When one exhales, a positive charge is discharged. Marcel felt that what was occurring on a more esoteric level was that the inhalation draws in pranic life force energy and exhalation releases the power of thought. This is what Marcel ultimately applied to his technique he taught for clearing and programming crystals. Although Marcel extensively worked with liquid crystals at IBM, it would not be until later that Marcel would begin to work with natural quartz crystals. It was after a lecture Marcel had given on his work with plants that he was approached by a woman named Dr. McKistry. Dr. McKistry proceeded to tell Marcel that she had some quartz crystals that would vibrate in one's hand when held. She persuaded him to take a look into them and following the lecture sent him a sample of one of these crystals to his lab. Marcel describes his first experience with the crystal in the following quote. I took the crystal that she had sent me, held it in my hand, drew my breath in, and happened to point the crystal at a friend of mine, Chuck McNosa. As I pulsed my breath, a charge went through the crystal and into this man. His head went back, and he went into an altered state of consciousness. That was my first encounter with a crystal. I said, this is for the birds. I want nothing to do with it." End quote. Being that Marcel was an open-minded scientist, rather than simply writing off and forgetting about this experience, he overcame his resistance and hesitancy and began his work with crystals. He soon immersed himself into his research and discovery on crystals. Early on, however, Marcel discovered that there were limitations to the way quartz was in its natural form. It was hard to repeat experiments as natural quartz varies in its geometric shapes and each piece is a bit different from the next. As a scientist, Marcel needed more uniformity. Marcel also found that uncut quartz in its natural state would not cohere the field that came from the mind and body of a person. Marcel felt that in order to do that, the crystal would need to be optimized by the proper cutting and faceting of the crystal. He likened it to a ruby. A ruby, in its uncut state, lacks the ability to cut through steel and focus light. When the same ruby, however, is precisely faceted and optimized, it can focus light with precision and cut through metal and other materials effortlessly. Marcel would soon discover what he theorized would actually be true, that in fact a natural quartz crystal cut in a very specific way could cohere, amplify, and project 
thought energies. Being that there was very little scientific information about quartz in this particular area, Marcel had to begin his own extensive research that ultimately led him to having a dream, which would soon reveal the proper angles of the first Vogelkot crystal. Marcel was very intuitive, as most successful inventors are. Marcel often commented on the need for a childlike mind, a mind that is open yet detached from outcomes. It is in this place that pure, accurate information can enter into one's mind. The false ego is not present, and one enters into a playful, creative state within the mind where new potentials exist. Being an inventor myself, and coming from a family where my father, Mark Newkirk, was an inventor and world-class scientist, I can attest to the need to enter into this childlike state of being. We have found it paramount in bringing into existence some of the technologies we have invented and brought forth, some of which will be mentioned briefly in this video towards the end. In 1974, Marcel had a dream where he saw a shape and a vision. This structure remained in his mind's eye for minutes. He said there were no words, just the image. The image was the Kabbalistic tree of life. Marcel said at the time he knew nothing about the Kabbalah, but he was now shown the angles of the crystal he was to cut. His question as to what shape and angles he needed were now solved, and it would now just be the practical and technical details that would remain to bring the first Vogel cut crystal to fruition. Marcel said it took him about one year to cut and grind the crystal with the proper and correct angles. The first Vogel crystal Marcel cut was a four-sided one, very similar to the one here, but not as clear. Marcel had now successfully created a precision instrument that was capable of converting a charge through an electromagnetic spectrum into an observable and measurable frequency from an electrical standpoint. A type of step-down transformer that transduced subtle psychic energies he could now scientifically measure these energies using an ultraviolet spectrometer and by using water as a measurable medium. In other words, Marcel took plain water and was able to spin the water around one of his charged Vogel crystals, thus in turn charging the water and then being able to measure the charged water. Marcel's research revealed that the water, which was now structured by the crystal he mentally programmed, would have detectable ultraviolet bands which otherwise had not been present. Marcel said, quote, there's a whole new absorption band of water developed from just transferring a thought from the crystal into the water. These are permanent changes, meaning that I can take this water one day, one week, or one month later, and I will see the same spectrum, end quote. Ten years of research revealed that these precision cut Vogel crystals vibrated and resonated at the same rate as water itself. Marcel said, quote, water is the staff of life, and when you cut and attune a crystal to the water molecule, you have then the primary channel of communication, of going into the bloodstream, which is essentially water, and injecting the vibration or pattern that the body needs for rebuilding, restructuring, and reforming what is required within it. Unquote. He continued on to say, quote, The major discovery that we have made in our laboratory in San Jose is that you can take a crystal, charge it, get it oscillating, and then mentally program in the crystal of what you want. It can be the love that is within your heart, it can be the Bach flower remedy, a homeopathic remedy, or other form of medication. This vibration now in the crystal can be directly transferred to water, Water is the medicine of the future. We speak of vital water, we speak of holy water, we speak of Lord's water, we speak of sacred springs. Each one of these statements we find to be true. When I have studied waters from various sacred locales, I find a structure in the water which is unique from the bulk water. I got a sample from a sacred spring in Hungary and it exhibits an energy level that transcends anything I have seen anywhere. I take one drop of the water and put it in my reverse osmosis water and all of the water
takes the charge which was in the original drop of the Hungarian water, end quote. This is such a powerful statement and realization that Marcel shared. The fact that one drop of water that is of a higher resonance, vibrating in coherence, can change and reprogram the entire vessel of bland osmosis water is really incredible. It is also very empowering on so many levels, as it represents and illustrates how much higher ideas govern and win the right of way. There are so many implications for this in our own lives. My wife often talks about the importance of being the thermostat and not the thermometer by setting a higher frequency tone for those around you. Bring up the vibration of the group. It can be done verbally in conversation, but it can also be done non-verbally simply by holding a clear higher vibrational thought. Doing this ends up changing the surroundings. Since the human body is 60 to 70 percent water, a Vogel cut crystal coupled with the right technique and pure love based mindset, which is also key, a Vogel cut crystal can be used to restructure and harmonize the water within one's body. To further support what Marcel Vogel found, you can also look at Japanese researcher Dr. Masuru Omoto and his work on water, which illustrates how water can be programmed with human thought. Dr. Masuru Omoto was a well-known Japanese scientist who was known for his amazing research work with the molecular structure of water. His work showed that human thoughts and emotions impact water and its structure. He found that when water was exposed to different emotions, the molecular structure of that water would take on a particular structure based on that particular emotion. Dr. Emoto would take a sample of water and effectively program it with a thought and flash freeze the water and then look at the frozen water molecules under a high powered microscope to observe their crystalline structure. What he found was that the water that had been programmed with inspiring and uplifting words, for example such as love, joy, and gratitude, the crystals would be nicely formed, geometric in appearance and balanced. When the water was programmed with words like hate, evil, and stupid, the water crystals would be deformed and unbalanced in their appearance. We know the human body is primarily made up of water. Water can be seen as a liquid crystal. As Dr. Emoto demonstrated, water programmed with words and thoughts becomes structured. The fact that a specific cut of a crystal, a Vogel cut crystal, can amplify thought energies which are in resonance with water is quite an amazing realization. What was being illustrated by Dr. Emoto's work was that love can take on form and structure and dissonance cannot. Said differently, love can create. This is paramount as Marcel found that the key to successfully programming crystal was pure loving intent. Knowing this not only gets you to think about what our own inner talk does to our own water structure in our own bodies, but really about the opportunity here that we have at hand. The very fact that science can demonstrate how human thoughts can affect the structure of water and thus in turn assisting in creating our physical and mental reality is quite a remarkable discovery. Marcel said that his nonprofit, Psychic Research Incorporated's number one project was the purification of water, and the second project was the purification of the bloodstream in order to remove unwanted patterns. It was after five years of extensive work that he created these specific quartz crystal transducers that were attuned to the water molecule. Marcel believed that it was through water that life emerged and that water was the vehicle through which the patterns, the geometric forms, are consolidated to build a critical pattern through which a life form comes into being, as he put it. Marcel said, quote, I have been able to put into water various essences of minerals, that is, the vibration minerals, and they grow crystals in the water. In so doing, I now get crystals that are exceedingly sensitive to the vibration of the human mind. These are truly mind transducers." End quote. Marcel is referring here to crystals that he grew in solution in his lab and not quartz crystal, 
but they form in very much the same way. Marcel demonstrated this with a wine experiment he did. At Sycamore Creek Winery in California, he created a significant change to the structure of their wine by intentionally transferring a magnetic field into a crystal and in turn using that to alter and change the taste of the wine. In Marcel's words, he said, quote, I have taken a very young run-of-the-mill Cabernet Sauvignon, run it through coils around a crystal that had been programmed with love, and found that what originally was a rather bitter, highly acid wine was transformed, in a matter of seconds, into a very palatable wine that tastes as if it had aged for many, many years. That is what love does for wine. It creates balance in which the highest potential of the form is allowed to emerge." End quote. This change was measurable and could be shown scientifically using a Milligauss meter and also through all those that tasted it and could experience both its aroma and palatability. The changes in the wine would remain unchangeable in the wine for years without changing. Nikola Tesla was another amazing mind that thought very highly of quartz and its properties. He did hundreds of experiments with quartz. He was very well versed in energy, frequency, and vibration. I find it interesting that Tesla said, quote, If you only knew the magnificence of three, six, and nine, then you would have the key to the universe, end quote. Quartz is naturally hexagonal, six-sided, and it turns out one of the most powerful cuts for a Vogel cut crystal is a six-sided Vogel. Nature has so many answers hidden within it if we look and pay attention. The powerful effectiveness of the six-sided Vogel crystal is additionally confirmed as being a powerful choice by Dan Willis and Elena Danan, who carry a lot of weight in the area of understanding of crystals. Through Dan and Elena's communication with a higher dimensional being named Jenhan, they have been able to bring forth a lot of amazing information that further confirms mankind's draw and love for crystals and how they can be used for much higher purposes. Quartz is comprised of the mineral silicon dioxide, which is also found naturally within our bodies. This is a connectional tie in addition to other resonant similarities, such as that water creates a vibrational match between humans and crystals. This vibrational match puts us in resonance for the energetic vibrations that crystals transmit. Quartz has a hexagonal crystalline structure. The atoms of quartz are arranged in hexagons. These hexagons are comprised of many different interlocking pyramids. These pyramids are made up of one silicon atom and four oxygen atoms, which form little pyramids with the silicon atom being in the middle. It takes billions of these tetrahedrons to form a crystal. Natural quartz crystal has the unique ability to act as a transmitter. In its natural and uncut form, the transfer signal that goes through the crystal is not very strong and leaves the crystal dispersed. However, a quartz crystal that is properly cut to the Vogel crystal specifications has greatly enhanced qualities with much greater focus. These qualities allow the crystal to be used as an effective amplifier of thought energies, allowing it to send out a coherent signal. A question that sometimes comes up is, why do we need a crystal? Can't we just point a finger and do it on our own? We don't need a car either to get from one distant location to another, but they sure can be helpful. A Vogel cut crystal is an effective vehicle for amplifying, concentrating, and focusing thought energies. The Vogel cut crystal has been conceived and brought forth as a mechanism for assisting us and enabling us to bring forth and amplify our innate healing abilities. Here is a quote from Marcel's psychic research. The energetic healer has to deal with the emanations of his or her hands or bioenergy field, which do not have the same level of coherence one can obtain by using a crystal as a focusing tool." End quote. Marcel goes on to say, this carrier wave must have a coherence to it so as not to mingle with the radiations emitted from the target material, but act now as the differentiating transport vehicle. The quartz crystal cut in the diapyramidal shape provides such an instrument, end quote. 
Tesla said, in a crystal we have a clear evidence of the existence of a formative life principle, and though we cannot understand the life of a crystal, it is nonetheless a living being. So now we have a tool, a vogel cut crystal, which is a powerful amplifier of thought energies. It has the ability to take a thought, cohere, and amplify it. Let's take a detailed look into what a vogel crystal is and its unique properties. To be a vogel crystal, Marcel outlined some important and precise characteristics that were paramount in creating these high precision amplifiers. Number one, the crystal must be double terminated which simply put means it must be pointed at both ends. Here is a picture of a single terminated crystal pictured on the left and a double terminated Vogel crystal on the right. Number two, the crystal must have four or more sides. Number three, the crystal must be hand cut. Number four, the input end or receiving end, which is the wider end, which is often referred to as the female end, as an internal angle of that of the Great Pyramid, which is approximately 52 degrees. Depending on the source, the internal angle of the Great Pyramid is 51.83 to 51.85 degrees, which puts the end of the Vogel crystal as a golden means angle. There's often confusion over the angle of the Vogel cut crystal, as Marcel talked about the receiving end being 51 degrees, 51 minutes, 51 seconds. When you plug those numbers in and calculate the angle, you get 51.86 degrees, which rounds up to 52 degrees. Number five, the firing tip or output end, often referred to as the male end, needs to have a more acute internal angle than the receptive end. The ideal angle for this is 60 degrees. Number six, the crystal must be cut on the C-axis or the growth axis of the crystal. Number seven, the crystal cutter must have pure loving intentions when cutting the crystal. One of the things that Marcel emphasized was that the metaphysical properties of the Vogel crystal was dependent on the spiritual level of the person who performed the cutting and shaping of the actual crystal. Lastly, number eight, a Vogel crystal should be made from natural quartz. Man-made, lab-grown quartz lacks some of the energetic qualities that are found in natural quartz that is grown over millions of years. Here's a diagram showing the parts of a Vogel cut crystal. The larger, wider end of the crystal, which is the receiving end, is where the life force, chi energy, enters in and the energy becomes amplified and cohered as it flows down through the crystal and out the output end. It is a misconception that a Vogel crystal has to be entirely clear. The crystal does not have to be entirely clear and may have inclusions, feathering, and other internal characteristics. Certainly some of the crystals that Marcel cut were not all that clear and they were very effective at doing what they were designed to do. Many people want a crystal that is visibly very clear, but that is not necessary to be fully functional. The crystals we offer on our website, vogelcutcrystals.com, are quite clear, with very little feathering or inclusions. We use very high quality quartz to achieve as clear a quality as we can. Dan Willis and Elena Danan have brought forth information indicating that a six-sided Vogel crystal is one of the most optimal cuts. Dan Willis worked with Marcel Vogel for many years and Elena Danan is an archaeologist, both of whom have extensive knowledge about crystals. A Vogel crystal can be cut with many different sides. The first ones Marcel cut were four-sided, but he cut many other faceted Vogel crystals as well. Often people ask what number of facets is best. The real answer to that is what are you drawn to? More facets is not always better. In fact, Marcel said that once a crystal had more than about 24 sides, that the crystal started to diminish in its amplification ability. Now that being said, 32-sided crystals may be better for one person than another, as perhaps they feel better with more sides, their belief system or ego feels like it matters, and if that is the case, maybe it does to some extent. Or maybe they're not in a place where they could handle a more amplified crystal. 
I personally primarily use a 12-sided Vogel cut crystal and find that very effective. I also really am drawn to the 6-sided one as well. Quartz by nature is hexagonal, 6-sided. My wife uses a number of different Vogel cut crystals for her energetic clearing work at her holistic center, and she really likes a 13-sided citrine Vogel crystal for her work. I had read that Marcel said one of his favorite cuts was an 8-sided Vogel crystal. For work with water, Marcel used a 13-sided Vogel crystal. It is a personal preference and for you to determine what resonates as being the best for you and also your desired applications. When choosing a Vogel crystal for its number of facets, go with your gut and what you're drawn to. Don't overthink it. If you simply feel attracted to one just by the look of it, that is all that matters. That is your indicator that the crystal would be a good fit for you. When asked the question, what is the significance of the number of sides, Marcel responded, quote, the greater number of sides, the greater the force that can be stored. You put a charge into the crystal and the charge bounces around the faces, and that determines the rate of vibration, end quote. That all being said, Marcel also shared that he found in his experiments and practice a crystal that was cut with more than 24 sides at a reduced power signal that became more muted as the number of sides increased. This is not necessarily a bad thing, as for certain applications more facets may be needed. It is all something to consider depending on the particular use and intent of the crystal. A Vogel cut crystal can be made of not just clear quartz, but also citrine and smoky quartz as well. Citrine and smoky quartz have a different feel to them and have their own natural characteristics. Citrine is a variety of the mineral quartz and smoky quartz owes its color to gamma rays and the presence of trace amounts of aluminum built into its crystal lattice. Citrine is sometimes referred to as the merchant stone and is a particular good one for manifestation. Smoky quartz is good for groundwork as it is associated with the earth and base chakras. Unfortunately, much of the citrine on the market is actually heat-treated amethyst that is made by taking chunks of amethyst and heating it up at high temperatures, which in turn changes its appearance and gives it a citrine color to it. From an energetic standpoint, this type of citrine has vastly different energetic qualities than that of naturally formed citrine. If you want a citrine Vogel cut crystal, be sure to get it from a reputable source. Occasionally tips break when working with a crystal. Although the tips are hard, they are fragile and can chip if bumped up against something. It is important to always handle the crystal with care. Set it down on a towel or in a stand if you need to while working with it. The more sides the crystal has, the rounder it is, and the more likely it is to roll off a table or surface, so beware of that. A tip can chip for a number of reasons. Often people think it was because they were careless, but that is not always the case. A tip can chip if too much energy is coming through. We have received emails from people saying they chipped the firing tip of their Vogel crystal and were disappointed, as they were supposed to do land clearing, for example. Sometimes land clearing requires less focus of energy and more dispersal. A broken firing tip occasionally is exactly what the land needs. It may not be what the individual may prefer, but energies flow and work in different ways, and sometimes the optimal way is to have it somewhat diffused and dispersed. Unintentional misuse of the crystal can be another reason. Rumi Da, who was trained by Marcel and used to cut crystals until his recent passing, shared a story about he went to work on a very young child and the energies would have been too much for the child and the crystal shattered. Rumi Da shared this with Marcel Vogel at the time and Marcel said that the energies would have been far too much for the child to handle. One of the things about a Vogel cut crystal that is very important is that the intention of the cutter of the crystal has to be very pure as the pure loving intent aids in the crystal only being able to be used for benevolent purposes. If it is used otherwise, the crystal will either not function or break. In some circumstances, a crystal breaks as it has served its purpose and has done what it was meant to do. Marcel Vogel was asked the question if a crystal could still be used if the tip was chipped and he said it could be. 
Sometimes a Vogel crystal is so clear that it looks like glass. There are certainly some sellers of so-called Vogel crystals on the market that are selling cut glass and pretending that they are natural quartz. It can be hard to tell with the naked eye. A fair number of the crystals we cut are so clear they do look like glass. Here is one test that can be done to determine if they are real, if done carefully. Glass has a hardness of about 5.5 on the Mohs scale, while natural quartz has a hardness of about 7 and therefore can easily scratch glass. If you decide to do this test, use caution, as it would be easy to press too hard and snap the tip right off the crystal. But if you press ever so slightly, this test will work fine. You can see here that the Vogel cut crystal is scratching and actually cutting into the glass plate. There is a belief out there that clearing a crystal using a salt water rinse is somehow a good method for clearing. Marcel's response to this was, quote, It absolutely destroys them. I've argued with people about this and they refuse to listen. They're wrapped up in their ritual, end quote. Marcel said that the salt would mess up the finish of the crystal and also create a film on the outside of the crystal. Marcel tested other forms of clearing, such as smudging with sage and cedar, and did not find them to be adequate ways of clearing a crystal. Other people have suggested clearing crystals in moonlight, but I have yet to see compelling evidence that this is an effective way to clear a crystal. Marcel said there were two ways to clear a crystal, using a degausser or by using breath work with the mind. Degaussers used to be more common as they were used for erasing data stored on VHS and cassette tapes. The way they work is a magnetic coil within a degausser sends out an electromagnetic pulse that goes through the cassette tape, or crystal in this case, and completely removes any previously recorded or programmed data by disrupting the previously encoded magnetic field. In essence, what one is doing to clear a crystal is creating disorder in the program held in the magnetic field which erases the previously held program. When you charge a crystal, you create order. It is through their programming of love that brings order to disorder. Marcel said the breath work with the mind was the preferred method for clearing a crystal. That is also the most empowering way to clear a crystal as it puts the power within your hands where it belongs. We have amazing potential within each one of us and now is the time for us to begin to recognize that and activate it. Here is how Marcel taught to clear and program a Vogel cut crystal. First, one must clear a crystal from previous vibrations. To clear a crystal, take your left hand and place the crystal with its output end facing up between the middle finger and thumb. Next, take your right hand and place your thumb and middle finger on opposite facets as shown. Now hold within your mind the intent to clear the crystal. With that intent in mind, draw a breath in through your nostrils and hold. Then abruptly release the breath out through the nostrils. Repeat this process for each set of facets by rotating the crystal clockwise in your hands, clockwise in respect to the output tip. Hold your fingers on the next pair of facets. Draw a breath in through your nostrils and hold. Then abruptly release the breath out through the nostrils. Continue this process until all the sides are done, two sides at a time. For a four-sided crystal, this process would be done two times. For a six-sided crystal like shown here, the process is done three times, and so forth. For odd number sided crystals, such as a 13 sided crystal, this process would be done seven times. Now that the crystal has been cleared, it is time to program it. To program the crystal, hold the crystal in your right hand so that the output side is pointing out from your hand and the wider input side is facing in towards your palm. Rotate the crystal in a clockwise manner in respect to the tip. This helps build the energy within the crystal. 
Continue to rotate the crystal in your hand until it starts to feel sticky. Once it is sticky, there is enough charge buildup that it is ready to be programmed. Your index finger should rest on one of the facets near the tip without covering the tip. Now hold in your mind the program in which you desire to program the crystal with. Love should always be the primary and necessary component in any desired program. Now draw a deep breath in through your nostrils and hold it as you now direct that loving program towards the crystal and focus in on it. Then abruptly release the breath out through the nostrils as you simultaneously jerk your arm down and squeeze the crystal within your hand. This motion and pressure squeeze exerted by the hand creates an electrical charge on the crystal. The crystal should now be programmed. To check, hold the crystal horizontally in your left hand and run your index finger down one of the facets of the crystal. If it feels sticky, it has been properly programmed. If it slides freely, repeat the programming process. The crystal is now ready to be used. When using the crystal, Marcel said that by placing an index finger on one of the slants of the tip, it could be used like a shutter control. When the finger is moved down towards the tip, it becomes more focused, and when it is pulled back from the tip, the field becomes broader. Marcel's protege and close friend Rumida said that if you have programmed a crystal correctly, that you can hold your breath and feel your body resonate with the crystal, and it will vibrate within your hand. Some people feel this right away, and others it takes practice. Once the crystal has been cleared and then programmed, you can mentally put into the crystal whatever else you would like to put into it. The foundation for programming a crystal, Marcel stressed, was love. That is a fundamental and paramount part of the programming. Physical pressure that is exerted on the crystal while the crystal is held within your hand and programmed actually creates an electrical pulse or piezoelectric charge that oscillates the crystal lattice structure and generates charge on the outside of the crystal. In an interview with Rumida, he said that Marcel would talk about how love is the glue of the universe and that all healing is a consequence of loving. Vogel crystals are great for doing energy work on people, including yourself. You can also use Vogel crystals for grid work, land clearing, and clearing and working with ley lines. With care, they can even be used with tuning forks. Striking a tuning fork and placing it on one of the facets of the female end, you can amplify and send the energy through the crystal. It's quite remarkable and a powerful energetic experience. Many people that use tuning forks prefer a ball end or hemisphere end crystal. This cut of crystal is not a Vogel cut, but is rather referred to as a pranic wand. It is a ball or hemisphere input end to it. It does not have the same properties as the Vogel cut crystal, but nonetheless can be an effective tool. On our website, we offer these pranic wands as well as Vogel cut crystals, as they work well with tuning forks. It was around 2005 or 2006 that I first became aware of Vogel crystals through my father, Mark Newkirk. Mark was a world-class scientist he was a materials engineer and prolific inventor and named on more than 900 foreign patents and 100 U.S. patents. He had spent his life on the leading edge of science. Towards the latter part of his life, he began developing technologies to help elevate consciousness. He felt that the fastest way to change the world was for people to raise their consciousness. This led to the creation of numerous cutting-edge technologies that created coherent, harmonious information fields and environments that an individual could immerse themselves in. Within these environments, individuals could more readily connect to higher levels of their own consciousness and awareness. It was quite remarkable, the ability to turn on innate abilities within ourselves that are dormant. Within each and every one of us, we have amazing self-healing capabilities, intuitive capabilities and perceptive capabilities. When we immerse ourselves in a coherent field, 
we can more readily access and connect to these abilities and begin to turn them on. All of this is done through the creation of technologies based on information fields that utilize elements of light, music, and sacred geometries. Within these technologies, we used vocal cut crystals as amplifiers. Essentially now, an untrained person that had never even consciously meditated had the opportunity to now enter into a higher consciousness state that an advanced meditator would have taken years to achieve. Mark Newkirk described it as the following, quote, If you surround an individual who has their own information field, aura, with a coherent field that is more coherent than their own, they will drop distortions and their own energetic field gets progressively stronger and more coherent. The field effect initiates a reduction of stress load distortions and an individual progressively remembers who they are. All beings in an unstressed state have an innate self-healing ability that is virtually limitless." End quote. I share some of my story as it illustrates how crystals can be used in many different ways. I spent many years working in machine shops with my father, creating technologies with him, and working and learning from him. Through my years of experience, and also using these technologies to raise my own intuitive abilities, I began creating technologies as well that were based in the same paradigm that also use Vogel crystals within them. The Core Harmonizer was one of the first pieces of technology that was based in this paradigm that I brought through and commercialized to get out into the world. Subsequently, the Quantum Flow technology and Cohere Meditation Mat as well. Part of the way in which my father and I would invent and create was to download information and receive visions and mental images. Initially, it was tough getting crystals for the technologies. At the time, there were only two main crystal cutters that were left that had worked with Marcel personally, and the wait time was eight to 10 months, even for just a couple crystals at a time. After a while of operating like this, it became clear this was unsustainable, especially if we were going to bring technologies out into the world in any kind of capacity. Fortunately, as synchronicity would have it, I was able to connect with a master cutter who had been cutting crystals for many years and was well versed in the methods Marcel came up with and agreed to work with us. We have since teamed up with him and he provides us with the crystals needed for our core harmonizer, cohere meditation mats, and quantum flow units, and at the same time additional crystals that we can offer on our website vogelcutcrystals.com so that other people can have access to these amazing tools for their own use and projects. Crystals have been used for thousands of years by mankind and are used every day in modern technologies and people don't even know they're using them. Quartz, silicon dioxide, is found in quartz watches, liquid crystal display televisions or LCD TVs as they're referred to, electronic chips, robotics, radios, and even your charcoal grill igniter, to name a few. A quartz crystal has within it a type of electrical resonator or piezoelectric property that when activated produces an electrical signal with a precise frequency. These quartz crystals, being that they are so precise, can be used to control the frequency of a signal. When human consciousness works intentionally with a quartz crystal point, especially one that has been hand cut like a Vogel cut crystal, it can in fact be used as an amplifier of intent and information and become a powerful amplifying tool. Being that quartz is one of the most abundant minerals on the planet, it would seem fitting that it was put here for a reason. It would make sense that the creator would want to surround its creations in a space resonant with love. As humanity's understanding of crystal grows, we will continue to find great uses for these amazing crystal instruments. I think humankind will begin to discover that crystals go way beyond the esoteric and end up being crucial components to technologies that will literally change our world. Crystals will find their way into energy production and transportation, the likes of which we have yet to see. The power lies within us. This is a time which we can re-empower ourselves and recreate the world we want to live in, and crystals are one part of this. 
Much of the chaos on the planet is being caused by the old systems that are beginning to collapse under their own weight. These systems and ways of life can no longer function in a higher planetary vibrational state and are on their way out. They are cumbersome, tired, self-serving systems designed only to benefit a few, and they must go. This is a time to create a new system based on higher integrity. These higher systems will be supported as people shift over to them and the old systems will begin to collapse under their own weight. Let us together create a world where we can not only heal, but a world where we can grow and flourish in the right ways. Future growth will be measured by our symbiotic relationship with Mother Nature. It is hard for most people to imagine this, as their thought has been historically on a different vibrational plane of understanding. As more and more people start to raise their vibrational state, humankind will be lifted out of the fog of misunderstanding and be made aware of the beauty and brilliance of incorporating nature at the heart of whatever is to be created. This will stem from a collaboration with what would almost seem like magical powers that are available for co-creating a magnificent planet. The proper use of crystals are in fact a part of this transformation. Many of the things that people have dreamed about, such as instantaneous healing, instant manifestation, pollution-free power generation, overcoming gravitational forces for travel, and telepathic communication, to name a few, will be made readily and easily available. We all have amazing gifts within us, and now is the time to activate them. To purchase or to learn more about our crystals, visit VogelCutCrystals.com. In the video description, you'll find links to our other websites and the technologies found within this video, our holistic center, books and resources we mentioned, and credits and resources used to create this documentary. Thanks for watching.